Good day. My name is Dr. Eric Strauss. I'm a psychologist who'd like to speak with you today about the important subject of intelligence and personality, or IQ and cognitive functions. Let's take a look, shall we, at what we have on tap for today. This is from Wikipedia. It's a good starting spot. Scores from intelligence tests are estimates of intelligence, whatever that means, right? Unlike, for example, distance and mass, a concrete measure of intelligence cannot be achieved given the abstract nature of the concept of intelligence. IQ scores have been shown to be associated with such factors as nutrition, economic status, morbidity and mortality, social status, perinatal environment, and there is still significant debate about the heritability of IQ and what the mechanism of, of inheritance might be. So, I should note at this point that I'm not actually a doctor, but I do play one on YouTube. I also don't actually wear these glasses, but I thought it would be a good idea to, to help me look smart. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next slide. So this is the kind of test question that I've encountered plenty of times on various kinds of reasoning and IQ tests, and it shows you a set of patterns and asks you to predict what the next the next pattern in the sequence is. If you've taken any kind of IQ test before, you've probably encountered this kind of problem. But that's not the only kind of problem on IQ tests. The many different kinds of IQ tests include a wide variety of item content. Some items are visual, while many are verbal. Test items vary from being based on abstract reasoning problems to concentrating on arithmetic, vocabulary, or general knowledge. And it really depends on the specific test. So let's look here. Let's look at all these various tests that are considered the intelligence test or IQ test. Raven's progressive matrices, Cattle Cultural Flair 3, Reynolds Intellectual Assessment Scales, Thurns, etc. And each of these tests takes a different approach to testing what purportedly is the same thing in all those in all people, which is intelligence, right? So it should be noted that this is ordinally ranked, which means when things are ordinally ranked, which is a good way to rank them in general, that, uh, you know, like in this case, 100 is the center. So because it's ordinarily ranked, it's impossible for anybody to be, um, if you're in the exact middle of the pile, you score exactly the middle. So in other words, your actual score tells you where you are respective to other parties within the larger pool, not where you are compared to some sort of um, abstract ideal or compared to zero, for example. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. So this is a comment I got. I don't think subjective is an inaccurate label to attribute to TI users in the following sense. Now keep in mind, this is in response to a video I made called uh, Lijo's Defining Subjective Incorrectly, something like that. He says, TI leads to the epistemological attitude of trusting what you can see for yourself and know for yourself firsthand. Absolutely not true. Quite to the contrary, it says validity is important even if it's not related to anything in reality. So, for example, um, all pigs fly, I'm a pig, therefore I fly, is valid even though none of the things is objectively or observationally true, right? Well, the main thing I want to note about this comment here, though, is he didn't reply to anything I said in the previous video. He presented a new position. Um, that tries to argue, which is not an unwise decision, that it's subjective from some different angle, right? Except, unfortunately, subjectivity isn't arbitrary like that. It's, it's a meaningfully defined term. So uh, this is why it's typical for TI users to acquire so much hands-on experience with something of interest that they can take apart, repair it, put it back together, and build it from scratch instead of just knowing how to use it. Well, that would be the case for, um, for matters that have their own logic, the extroverted thinking logic. So... If I'm talking about a vacuum cleaner, it's got a vacuum cleaner's logic. It's not a universal logic, right? But it wouldn't be the case for introverted thinking. So, for example, one kind of heuristic that you might use is to determine whether or not I know what I'm talking about is how I look. The fact that I've got these glasses, a full head of hair, and uh, I'm a doctor of psychology here on the internet, uh, hopefully is very convincing. So this is the sort of thing that TI doesn't take seriously, right? This, this authority thing. This is why TI asks for argumentation and reasoning with the claims so that TI can make up TI users' own mind. Remember, all cognitive functions are of the subject. Okay? So, 
He says here, this is why subjective isn't an accurate label for TI. Things can be true even if you don't understand them for yourself. Things can be true even if one made a cogent case to you and supplied you with consistent argumentation, overcame your objections. If no one made a cogent case. It is subjective because it is literally the logic of the subject, i.e. the subject's own logic. That is true, that one can something can be true without a cogent case being made for it. TI is not about what is true. That would be in, inverted intuition. TI is about whether what you said makes sense. And in this case, it doesn't. And I'll explain why in, in further points. But most importantly note, he didn't respond to anything I said in the original video. And of course, all cognitive functions are of the subject. And of course, deliberation functions are introverted functions, whether they're FI or TI. Whether you use a disinterested or an interested calculus is in fact a better definition of subjective than this guy's non-definition, right? Okay, so what IQ tests questions look like? Well, here's one, how many triangles? Obviously, you can see that these got, he's got a couple of rhombuses in here. Those aren't triangles. But you got to add up the bigger triangles as well as the small ones. What about this one? Well, I actually did this question just to see what I got, and I got 26. Is it right? Well, 8 plus 8 plus 8 equals 24. Uh, 8 plus 12 equals 20. Uh, 24 plus meow yeah, equals 30. Meow, yeah, it must be 6. What about these kind of questions? I have no idea what the answer to this question is. I'm terrible at these kind of questions. And I'm. this is all going to be linked back to cognitive functions soon enough. Don't worry. Here's a few intelligence test questions that I, I saw here. A bat and ball cost $1 and 10 cents in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Um, well, if it costs $1 more than the ball, the ball must cost 5 cents. And uh, the bat must cost a dollar and five. Okay, that's assuming there's no tax. If it takes five machines five minutes to make one five widgets, how long would it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? Well, the answer is, of course, it takes each machine five minutes to take one widget. So five minutes is the answer. The thing is, I know the answers to these questions because I've seen these kinds of questions before. This, this probably tricked me the first time I saw it, but it doesn't trick me now. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48, hour, 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take for the patch to cover half of the lake? Well, um, for it to cover half of the lake, it would take 47 days because it doubles the next day on the 48th day, right? So, um, again, a trick question that I've encountered before, so it doesn't, it doesn't, if impact it doesn't test my intuition anymore it only tests my introverted sensing my memory of having taken this test question before and my introverted intuition or extroverted intuition or whatever you want to call it in the sense that i understand I've, i have taken away the takeaway from the question which is how to answer it in the future should i encounter another one that's very similar but has different words in it right now here's an interesting question which is happier a or b I got this image because it's like, it's just mirrored, right? They're the same expression except it's mirrored. But this one looks happier to me because her right side looks happier, I guess. What's the next item in this sequence? I don't know is what I would put for this. I have no idea. I hate these kind of questions. I do terribly on them. Now, let's look for a second at Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons based breaks down the human personality, more or less, or the human being, into both physical and metaphysical qualities. Strength, dexterity, and constitution are all physical. Intelligence, wisdom, and charisma are metaphysical. So, in other words, I can be smart and wise, and you can't test it physically. I can be charismatic, and you can't test it physically. You can test my strength, you can test my dexterity, you can test my constitution. So... Remember that we use labels like this to describe people as well, except instead of usually strength and dexterity and whatever, we might say funny, genuine, reliable, graceful, insightful, decisive, efficient, smart. And these would go along generally with certain cognitive functions. Extroverted intuition, introverted feeling, introverted sensing, graceful is extroverted feeling, insightful, introverted intuition, decisive, extroverted sensing, efficient, extroverted thinking, and smart introverted thinking. Now, is this, does that mean it's correct to ascribe to introverted thinking people the label smart? Well, we'd all like to be all of these, right? But some we value more than others. And additionally, 
society values some of them more than others. So in other words, society, or at least school, for example, where most of us start society, values uh, reliability, efficiency, some amount of decisiveness, right? It uh, values grace, grace a lot. It doesn't really value genuineness a lot, and it doesn't value funniness very much, you know? So let's look here at what happens when we're dealing with physical attributes. Well, we can measure them and in very precise ways. This guy's not just fast and strong. He's got a 4-3-3-40. He's got a, you know, 27 bench press reps at whatever and yada yada. And if you go to an NFL combine, they try to break down all these skills and test them all. From weightlifting, to catching, to throwing. And then we've got other kinds of skills that we don't seem to ever really quite measure such as ability to figure out this blueprint from the screen to getting things done in the construction world. Or this, the ability to do this. Well, I mean, there is a show that tries to do to measure it. It's called Naked and Afraid, and they give everybody a survival score. So at this point, let me point out that I don't actually have a full head of hair. This is just a wig. Just like these glasses, I only need them to read. I don't use them to make YouTube videos. Um, but that doesn't make me less intelligent or less correct which is much more important okay so the problem with the talking about intelligence in general is it ignores that lots of things don't require intelligence like being a grief counselor right or at least not the kind of intelligence that we conventionally call intelligence so let's look at the cognitive functions by class we've got those functions that att attend to communication We've got those functions that attend to everything else. The universalist functions. N-E, N-I, T-I, F-E. And the particularist functions. S-E, S-I, T-E, F-I. You know, let's say attending to everything else. Attending to communication logic. Attending to everything else. The thing is, what we're doing here, talking about cognitive functions, intelligence, IQ, which functions link to what, whether personality should be linked to IQ, etc., that is very much a communication issue. It's about mapping. Okay? But we do try to link it to particular instances. So we should see instances bunch up into sets uh, data wise, data collection wise, as we predict in the model. Cognitive functions by perspective. S.C. I am opportunistic. I take action. I change the status quo. S.I. I know my body. I trust my experience. I learn through practice. F.I. I determine how to balance competing interests based on importance. So this is very much a complicated and high resolution uh, logic that has to be done here to manage when you when you or others have competing interests. You know, I I really love Barry and I love Joe and I love Tom and I have to pick one of them, for example. TE, I break down tasks. I solve non-communication problems. So this is the, the means of rendering a given desired outcome into a set of ordinal steps leading from the status quo to the desired outcome. Ordinated steps. First this, then this, then this. Good extroverted thinking anticipates that I need to put this down first or else when I get to step seven, I'm going to have to take the whole thing down and do it again. Expert intuition. Now, these are the communicative functions. I come up with ideas, I discuss, I explain things in many ways. NI. I know identities, I see patterns, and know what's relevant. TI. I check justifications for legitimacy. I determine who's right. Now, the, the other thing to remember is um, this this gentleman here in this, in this comment earlier, which maybe I'll bring up again, um, he's, he's indicating that Introverted thinking needs to have arguments made for it to, to conclude something's true. No, no, not at all. Introverted thinking, like introverted feeling, views the self something as an object, right? Like, uh, when T.I. asks questions, it wants you to subject at me, right? And give me words to check. If, if you said something, I've said, well, hold on, that doesn't make sense. I've checked your words for legitimacy. Now, it's... It is true that I check my own for legitimacy as well, but um, the key element here is that introverted thinking objectively parses 
objective data. That is to say, words that are there for everyone to look at. So I looked at that guy's words and I said, these words are bad. They are wrong. They have ignored everything I said in my argumentation and they've failed to make their point that they would like to without rendering the definition of subjective entirely arbitrary. I've made that point now, right? So the thing is, I'm not saying what's right or true. I'm saying that's bullshit. FE, I solve by interfacing with people managing perceptions. So if I wanted to solve by interfacing with people managing perceptions, I wouldn't say that's bullshit. I would say this is how sometimes our perspectives come into conflict and don't blah, 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 blah. But I'm more TI than I am FE. Okay. So now let's look at what the IQ tests of the world do. They broadly reward the intuitives and the thinkers. So extroverted intuition, introverted intuition, introverted thinking, expert thinking. Extroverted intuition is one of those functions that will allow you potentially to see when something's a trap or a trick question, like that five machines, five minutes thing, right? Or you could say that knowing the correct answer is a matter of introverted intuition, unless you've encountered it before, in which case, if it's the exact same question, you'll remember it via introverted sensing, but if it's a different version of the same question, you're still using introverted intuition to know that this is the same fundamental entity kind of question, it's just different in its particulars. And that's what all of these things are about. They're about the ability to communicate and the ability to engage in symbolic languages and symbolic reasonings. So remember, the IQ tests of the world were made by intuitives. They thus assess alternatives to pragmatism. So we're not the guy who's making the, the great shelter out there in the woods, okay? We're not. We're not the guys who are sitting there handling the construction business. We may or may not be the ones who are nurturing and caring for the, in the grief counseling capacity. We're probably not going to be very many of the, um, the com NFL combine players. You know, I know uh, Andrew Luck was a was an ENTP, but he he retired very quickly because he couldn't handle all the pain and SI problems. So, um, the takeaway from this then is what? It's that is introverted thinking intelligence well no but it correlates pretty strong with it pretty strongly with it because the people who made the tests are either trying to prove themselves intelligent in which case they're ti people or they're trying to prove themselves intelligent and they're te people nite people make questions like this this is the spatial pattern recognition test right whereas and and those make up a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of test questions. Now, arguments like this that don't address what I said at all, that that establish that because it's me making the judgment that it must be subjective, well, that's just insane. I mean, there's no judgment that's not made by an individual, and yet not all judgments are subjective. There's no there's no calculi that aren't made by individuals, and yet not all calculi are interested. So he's, by failing to address what I'm saying, see, my words stand, his don't. And this is introverted thinking. It's true for everybody that my words stand and his don't based on the fact that he didn't address what I originally said, that he's, he's not defining anything, that he's uh, assuming that TI, like, okay, so the thing he's saying here is typical for TI users to acquire so much hands-on experience with something of interest that they can take apart without being able to even, uh, without distinguishing really, uh, what kind of function that would be. I mean, the need to take something apart, repair it, put back together, a lot of experience with that is indicative of weak TE. So it's like, if he's not defining any terms and he's not thinking well and not speaking well, he's going to make mistakes like that comment, right? That, that kind of question here, what kind of question is that? It's a spatial question of some sort, but it's also kind of like a trick question. You have to realize you got to count the bigger triangles. And don't count the rhombuses. What kind of question is this? Pretty straightforward math. What kind of question is this? It's a, like a pattern recognition thing. I'm terrible at these. When I took an IQ test that had um, almost all visual pattern recognition like this, I got it. So I scored 107 on it, which is above average, but not much, right? And I'm surprised I even scored that high. I'm terrible at these kind of problems. The kind of problems where you have to 
take a, a piece of paper that's folded and imagine it's being turned in different directions what it would look like. Can't do it for shit. But I get all these right. Why? Partially because I've taken the test before. And this is partially to show you why IQ tests are bullshit, basically. Okay? There are ways that intuitives try to make themselves be able to have an ability score, like strength, dexterity, and constitution. There are ways that they try to say, hey, my label counts too. I want to be able to prove it. You can prove you're funny, people laugh. You can prove you're genuine with your tears. You can prove you're reliable by just doing the same thing every day. You can prove you're graceful by not making any social mistakes. But I'm mostly intuitive here. I want, I want credit for my insight and my intelligence, right? So the thing is, it's not surprising then that there's a somewhat of a strong correlation between TI tet questions that I give and some kinds of intelligence test questions. Remember, intelligence test doesn't do nearly as good a job as the football combine at breaking down skills. It doesn't have these kind of abilities to develop empirics that are quite as clear cut as in terms of what they mean. So being fourth, being able to run a 4-3-3 40-yard dash means you are able to very quickly go 40 yards compared to most people. And that's a very concrete metric. There's no such equivalent metric for intelligence. Yes, it generally will mean you'll be able to do more pattern recognition and be able to parse things logically rather than illogically. So, but that doesn't mean that this guy will necessarily get a terrible score on an intelligence test. So it's like if you if you go back to um, if you go back to Homie's comment there. He's not being logical in any meaningful sense. Um, he's not, and the reason he's not being logical, and you can tell he's not being logical, is because he's trying to avoid defining things and meaning things meaning one thing and not the other. Okay, so he says that he doesn't think it's an inaccurate label, but it's not a label, right? It's it is a term that refers to the process by which a decision is being made. Is being made against an objective calculus like validity and logical consistency or a subjective calculus like your interests. You assume that because I am a subject and I'm applying my own reasoning and decision making that it must be subjective. But all attentional manners are of the subject. No, no attentional manner is not paid attention by someone. So it's a huge mistake to... to ignore that reality and I've already stated that in a previous video and he's not responded to it. That failure to respond, right, on point, that's indicative of somebody who's accustomed to reasoning with interests rather than correctness or logic. So anyway, he's obviously not going to score nearly as highly as I am on verbal reasoning test questions. That doesn't mean he's dumb, it just means he's probably TI polar. Probably an ENFP, you know. So, um, I, as a consequence, my basic message here is don't put any weight in IQ tests. They're bullshit and they're ontologically assaultive. Do put weight in cognitive functions. They do explain things. But if, in fact, it does seem like certain aspects of a cognitive function test correlate too strongly with IQ tests, then get rid of the IQ test, not the cognitive functions. The end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.